Hamza Chimaev has definitely got to be next for a title shot, and here's why. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Dan from Fight Wave. If you guys do enjoy this video, do be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and enjoy the video. UFC 308 just ended, and Hamza Chimaev made an absolute statement to the middleweight division and to fans worldwide who wanted to be reminded of his dominance from his early UFC days, and he definitely made it clear that he is next for the title after his victory over Robert Whittaker at UFC 308 via submission in the first round. Going into this fight, there was a lot of skepticism and criticism surrounding Hamza Chimaev and if he would be ready to go into this fight and be able to defeat a guy like Robert Whittaker in a fashion that we know he has been able to defeat other fighters in the past with. A lot of people were criticizing his ability to go the distance, saying that if this fight goes past the first round, he might not be able to, you know, even be able to continue or keep up with the pace. But he definitely dispelled all the rumors with his dominance. And there was a very good point that Daniel Cormier brought up on the broadcast, saying a lot of people want to criticize his cardio. But when you look at the guy and look at how well he is in the first round, if you can get the guy out of the first or second round, then maybe you don't need cardio. You just need an excellent game plan. And Hamza definitely put that on display in this fight, giving Robert Whitaker zero room to breathe. It was a performance eerily reminiscent of his UFC debut where he gave John Phillips the beatdown of a lifetime, except this time he was changing positions effortlessly. He was really moving well with the scrambles, letting Robert Whitaker have no room to adjust, getting to his back several times before eventually getting a neck crank submission from the back that, you know, honestly, Robert Whitaker, I have never seen him look more vulnerable than in that moment. The tap was almost instant, very odd in that situation. And I think there might have been a dislocated jaw, but it showed shows how much raw power and athleticism Hamza Chimaev has and it was the perfect fight to remind fans once again of what this guy is capable of when you give him the right opponent and right setting to thrive. It looked like a phenomenal call and I honest to god think that that's the next fight that the UFC should go forward and make happen because when you look at these guys on paper not only can they sell a pay-per-view Drikas Duplessis with a massive South African audience and Hamza with a massive audience in the Middle East and in Russia but not only that, these both of these guys are just phenomenal fighters that back it up. You know, whether the results are stacked against them. I know Hamza was a favor going into this fight. But whether there's a lot of doubts and criticism around them, they always tend to dispel those criticisms with their performances. And I think when you have two fighters of that caliber come together, it's going to make for a lot more compelling fight than Sean Strickland, who, honest to God, I think the first fight with Drikas and him was great. But I think that Hamza versus DDP would be a whole nother level or layer of fighting. Now, don't get me wrong. If Hamza Chimaev does get the title shot and Sean Strickland doesn't, I still want to see Sean Strickland fight for the title. I think that even if they don't go the Hamza route, it'll still be a very fun title fight the rematch between him and DDP but I think that this leaves the middleweight division with a lot of flexibility going forward and I think that with the upcoming Sydney card and with a lot of cards in play this is the perfect opportunity to experiment and really create some new matchups, keeping the division healthy going forward. Sean Strickland, of course, coming off a victory at UFC 302, his first fight since the Drikas Duplessis title loss at UFC 302 over Paulo Costa, where he defeated him by split decision. And I know there was a lot of criticism and controversy surrounding that fight with a lot of people saying, you know, this guy, you know, he goes in there, he promises violence, he doesn't produce the most entertaining fight and calls immediately for an outright title shot. And I think, honestly... Not to say that Sean Strickland doesn't deserve a title shot, but I think that with Hamza Chimaev and the run that he's on, it makes a lot more sense because Sean, of course, while having the performance of a lifetime, defeating Israel Adesanya to get that belt, never defended it, never fought anyone else other than that, and lost the next fight after to DDP. I don't think that that warrants an immediate outright title rematch. Of course, the fashion in which he lost, the subject of much controversy, a lot of people saying he won the fight. I personally disagree. I don't think that he won the fight. I thought Drikas Duplessis did enough to win the fight, mixing the fight up perfectly. I think that's a conversation for another day, though. But regardless of that, the way you bounce back from a loss like that is not with a you know split decision victory, for lack of a better word. I was going to say boring, but I just don't think that that's the performance you have to put on to be able to call for a title shot. And while you have obviously done it with your resume and work ethic, I think when you have a guy like Hamzat, who I said before this, the winner of this fight could, you know, undoubtedly leapfrog, you know, Sean Strickland to get to that title shot. And I think Hamza did that with this fight in the way that he beat Robert Whitaker, defeating him in the first round. Now, while I think a title fight in South Africa isn't on the cards yet for Drikas Duplessis, I do think he's beloved enough in Australia to go out there and defend this title there. And I think it would be an excellent fight 
pairing him and Hamza Chimaev for a middleweight title fight as a main event in Australia and have the co-main event be someone like Sean Strickland versus Kyle Baraglio or even a rematch of Sean Strickland versus Israel Adesanya in a five-round format or three-round format, whichever the UFC decides to go with. But I think it's a healthy option for the UFC to really assess what the middleweight division will look like post UFC 312 if they do decide to do a title fight on that card. And I think it brings a healthy yet great card to Australia, building another heavy top to bottom stack card in Australia, giving the fans there what they truly deserve. Let me know your thoughts in the comments description down below, but I do think that Hamzat has simply just done enough. I think this performance was absolutely insane. UFC 308 was an insane card, and there is a whole other video we're going to be making most likely on Max Holloway versus Ilya Topuria, as I know a lot of people are going to be curious to hear my thoughts on that after I came out and said Max Holloway would beat Ilya Topuria. You guys can roast me in the comments for that all you want. I thought it was a great fight, and you know, congrats to Ilya Topuria. But regardless of that, hopefully you guys have enjoyed the video. Do be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. It's me, me, Dan from Fight Wave. Have a great day, guys.